then you can, and this is unedited. Okay. So go ahead. This is unedited. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the most interesting thing to me in the media sphere is the loss of plausible deniability for the people who are trying to establish the new future structures for media that uh, they don't need to understand uh, what the internet is and that they don't need to protect an open, ubiquitous, fast internet. So until internet uh, speeds are, are at the, the, the level they need to be at for everyone, and until access to those internet speeds are right, and until uh, we, we ensure that everybody has open architecture, which means we actually have the kind of competition and the level playing field that journalism is dependent on, we can't really have that kind of journalism. And uh, a lot of people like to think that, that was something we could just fix later, <laughs> but it's just the opposite. We actually have to ensure that that infrastructure is in place or else that journalism stuff is going to be in some closet where no one's looking at it. Now, how does that play out in what you do, or does that play out with what you do with Ford? You see, my whole portfolio is about ensuring that we have that, and uh, so all of the resources I have are focused on making sure that access to the internet is a right. That you know, a lot of people walk around and think these cell phones are somehow a luxury, but they're not. If that's how we actually get our jobs, if that's how we get interact with our professors or get our uh, schedule our visits with the parents, uh, the teachers who, who teach our children, you know, th th these are tools that everyone needs to have and we have to make it a right just like many other countries have already begun to make it a right. And I mean we do that with things like electricity right that are electric so how, how does the argument play out I mean is it a utility argument we have to look at this as a utility like the people get that? They do a little bit, except for, you know, utility's not so sexy, right? right. So, you know, it's like saying, hey, we really need to have, you know, more detentions. Right. So, like, it's not, it's not very exciting. But the fact of the matter is, um, there was a period of time where it was perfectly all right for people to have the telephone through party lines, where a couple families would share the same line, and you have to say, hey, get off the phone, I need got an important phone call coming in. And then at a certain moment in history, that wasn't okay anymore. And they actually, the government put plans in place and regulations in place and resources in place to ensure that even people in rural environments and even people without much money could actually have a telephone because it was something they needed in order to actually participate in the culture, to be real citizens of the country. And that's exactly what should happen right now in relation to the United, uh, United States thoughts about um, broadband and I hopefully I think that's what the government is moving towards they can't do it alone and the public needs to actually care about this as well which is exactly the question that you raised do they want to advocate for infrastructure right. uh, you know they're much more interested in advocating for jobs but they need to understand that without ubiquitous fast internet connections for everyone we're not gonna have jobs here what do you, I know this is going to be a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Like when you look, like what are the odds, right? Like when you look at where the debate's going, because when I, I talk to the FTC every once in a while, and it it seems like they pay lip service to yes, we need to do that, but it doesn't seem like that is being backed up with things. Google's obviously pushing for it, but it doesn't seem to be the push. Well. Good people can disagree about how we're going to get to this place. What's exciting is that on March 17th, the FCC is going to announce their plan for how we're supposed to get there. And the government's already said that by 2020, everyone's going to have a fast internet connection. Some people say that's not fast enough. Um, we need to do it sooner. And that the speeds that they're predicting that we're going to get to are not going to be fast right. enough to compete internationally. And right. that's a debate that we need to have publicly. I just hope that um, citizens begin to understand that all this fun stuff that they love, whether it's you know their ability to watch movies or the ability to connect immediately with their friends or all of these other things that are much more boring like pay for tickets or right. uh, register to vote or these other kinds of things. All of this is going to be uh, dependent on us having the right kind of infrastructure and that if you don't weigh in and say that we want the absolute best, we're not going to compete for a lot. So we got about 30 seconds left. What is, um, if you can talk, what's the, the thing that you can talk about that is the neatest thing that you've uh, been able to fund or give money to or that you've, in the last couple years? Well, a lot of it, um, Doesn't have to be sexy either. We like utility. You know, it's funny. <laughs> one of the nice things at Ford, I'm allowed to do some technology grants, and you know, uh, investing in the right kind of technology means that sometimes the bad technology doesn't doesn't grow. Uh -huh. You know, because it's got to compete with the good stuff. So um, I was able to give a grant to Wikimedia Foundation to help them oh. simplify how they upload video and upload um, uh, uh, images and. Uh, the consensus around how you actually add code, which is great because you know it's pretty easy to add things to Wikipedia, but if you're not a geek, it might seem right. hard. And 
Uh, at the Ford Foundation, we think everybody should play a role in writing the biggest uh, source of information in the world. And you know, we want to make sure that people who are not geeks can also tell their stories and be part of that conversation as well. So that, it was exciting to be able to do that. And it's a nice, it's nice to be close to them because there's a lot of really interesting things happening there. I think it's the future. Right. Uh, that was five minutes and 12 seconds. Thank you. Bye.